Okay, good morning, everyone, again. And uh, uh, last, last week, uh, we have a uh, meeting in uh, uh, conference in Sochi, and inspired by visit uh, President Putin, uh, my talk, because in, in this country we have to speak in Russian. My talk was prepared in Russian. However, since we don't have uh, translations, direct translations, so I'll speak in English. Uh, you will understand, I, I guess, from the pictures, basically. So, uh, Professor Hayashi, in previous talk, uh, talk about uh, his talk was um, devoted to research plasmonics. My talk devoted to magnonics, which is, uh, in some sense, uh, from the electromagnetic point of view, has uh, many uh, similarities, first of all. Secondly, uh, Professor Seufer, in his uh, introduction talk to this conference, uh, spoke about the uh, um, uh, photonics and uh, electronics, traditional electronics, and he said that uh, many, uh, well, uh, many engineers in microelectronics, nanoelectronics uh, nowadays, they are uh, taking uh, into account that photonics, uh, this, uh, this is a future, microelectronics, well, photonics is a future in 21st century of microelectronics. That's it, because in um, uh, 1965, Professor, uh, engineer Moore uh, from IBM, uh, he made some uh, prediction that every two years, the number of uh, chips will be twice, it, uh, increase it in twice. And this was now uh, known as a Moore's law. And this Moore's law worked very well until uh, 2013, when the uh, number of uh, real trans uh, transistor on the chip was increased by twice every, two, every year. Uh, however, uh, soon uh, we will come with this number, uh, with topological size of transistor uh, to some, uh, to some uh, limit. Uh, next year, for example, IBM uh, will already pr uh, pr produce a transistor with a topological size about 3 nanometers. What's the next? And uh, there are many possibilities uh, to, uh, uh, to overcome this problem. And one is related to uh, material of uh, related to magnonics, re uh, related to magnetic materials. So I will talk about this. Therefore, motivation of my work is uh, that magnetic uh, micro and nanostructure can be uh, some sort of replacement for uh, typical semiconductor devices, for typical semiconductor structures. Why? First of all, because there are no uh, joule uh, losses. Because magnetic materials, they don't uh, uh, possess uh, introduction of electrons. They work with uh, um, operation of uh, spin waves or magnons, therefore magnonics is a science, and uh, there are not uh, electrical currents there, or electrical currents can be introduced by, this is another story which will also be discussed here. Uh, then it is possible that uh, uh, to create so-called two-dimensional magnonic uh, networks, and is also the trend for uh, microelectronics, for nanoelectronics, now is going in three-dimensional direction because uh, of very small size of trans uh, tr transistors, as I said already, it is uh, now they, the engineers, they are trying to uh, grow uh, transistor in vertical, uh, vertical uh, direction. Therefore, transistor becomes three-dimensional in this sense. So in case of magnetic systems, uh, three-dimensional structures can also be replaced by two-dimensional structure, uh, or networks can be also uh, replaced by three-dimensional. And uh, frequency uh, range for spin waves or for uh, operating uh, particles uh, or quasi-particles of uh, magnons, they can be uh, from the megahertz up to gigahertz and terahertz, as you can see in my talk. Uh, so, uh, first of all, in uh, 1971, oh, sorry, 1971, in Yoffe Institute, uh, two Russian scientists, Diakonov and Perel, they are predicted about a uh, so-called spin hole effect. All we know is uh, hole effect, but uh, if you take semiconductor and uh, uh, take thin layer of semiconductor, put there the charge, uh, electrons, they also have uh, spins magnetic moments, and uh, the position of spins can be uh, only in two ways, up or down, 
well, just generally speaking. So due to any anisotropy of um, scattering of electrons uh, at uh, different uh, defects and semiconductor, it is possible that uh, spins with up direction can be uh, moved to one side and spin with, uh, spins with, other, di with uh, other direction can be moved in the other side. So so-called spin hole effect can be appeared. And this spin hole effect nowadays can be very strongly used for magnonics or magnonics as a part of spintronics. You will see about this later. So spintron and uh, spintronic and magnonic functional elements, they have a very typical way in this uh, picture. So we have magnetic material, which is information media, and carriers of information carriers. In, in our case, information carriers are magnons or spin waves. So the change of magnetic moment of magnetic material. And information medium, basically, it is magnetic medium. The best medium for spins is so-called yttrium iron garnet. This is a typical ferrimagnetic material. However, at the frequencies of about uh, gigahertz or even terahertz, it is very typical ferromagnetic material, so anisotropy is very small. There is only small crystallographic anisotropy and uh, with the value, uh, compared to the value of magnetization itself of this material, it is very small. And you have some transi uh, transducers which produce these carriers of, uh, uh, so they can create uh, excitation of carriers and they re can create receivers of these carriers. And characteristic scale of the signal processing devices. Uh, Characteristic scale depend, uh, depend on the wavelengths of propagating spin waves or magnons and can go from macro size to micro size, sub micro and even uh, uh, nano size. You will see this a little bit later. So, spintronics uses spins of electrons, as it was pre uh, shown in the previous slides. Uh, electronics use charge of electrons, but magnonics use only the change of magnetic moment. And in dielectric material, as typical for yttrium iron gun, this is typical dielectric material, no, uh, no charges inside of that, uh, the change of magnetic moment can be used similar to electronics, similar to spintronics, and you can do whatever you want. You can do analog data processing, condites, logic gates, buffer elements, and so on. So many, many other things you can produce with uh, magnonic devices. So typical structures for these magnonic devices, you uh, can also process uh, the, uh, the films with some periodic or aperiodic structures. You, you can create so nanodots, so-called nanodots, uh, as it's shown here, for example. And uh, the size can be from microns up to submicrons or even nanostructures. You can make periodic structure and you can make defects. So you can, as in photonics, you can, for example, excite spin waves in various waves and they can propagate uh, uh, considering the structure which you produce in these films. So it's already a repetition of the previous structure. And in fact, you can produce all of this, these magnonic networks similar to uh, electronics, uh, electronic uh, networks and similar to electronics excitation devices. So uh, electronics, photonics, plasmonics here, spintronics and magnonics. And here, what is problems of realization, frequencies working, uh, characteristics, wavelengths, uh, what kind of uh, um, carrier uh, of information and uh, medium of information. So for, for electronics, usually it's metal and semiconductors. So they can use electrons and holes. And characteristic wavelength is about one micro, uh, is uh, 2 point, um, minus 6 microns. So frequencies of operation gigahertz or even up to terahertz. However, realization problems is ohmic uh, losses, so joule losses, and uh, topology of uh, interconnecting is very uh, complicated. So in topology, you, you, lose, you, you have very strong losses. Photonics. Photonics uses dielectric materials, usually uses electromagnetic waves or photons, and uh, the wavelength, typical wavelength, is uh, visual uh, light or uh, infrared light. So frequencies from 40 up to 700 terahertz. So uh, very good uh, uh, scaling of these devices and uh, management of these devices. Plasmonics. Hayash, Professor Hayashi already have shown what is the size for wavelengths terahertz region, 
uh, however, problems is related to uh, skin effects if you use these metal films and also scattering, which was also shown that if you want to produce devices, so you have losses quite strong. So spintronics and especially magnonics. So as I already said, that frequency lengths can be from 0.1 microns, even from 10 nanometers up to up to uh, quite long, uh, quite long wavelengths, so it's electromagnetic waves, and frequency can be up to uh, 200 gigahertz, and uh, I can show 20, 30 terahertz. In some way, it is necessary to have uh, external magnetic field, and this is very bad for uh, all electronics because if you use magnetic field, so magnetic field can uh, also be influence uh, can influence on propagation of uh, electrons uh, if you use conventional uh, microelectronics. However, if you uh, trans uh, if you already replace ferromagnetic materials by anti-ferromagnetic materials, then in many cases you cannot use external magnetic field. You don't need it for this state. Therefore, it is possible to make magnonic devices working without external magnetic field. And this becomes very, very uh, popular nowadays for investigation and possibly for application as well. So uh, spin waves or magnons, these are qualification, uh, classification of spin waves. So fr starting from electromagnetic waves, you go to so-called magnetostatic waves. When you use for uh, description of uh, spin waves, uh, Maxwell equation in so-called magnetostatic approximation. So these are wavelengths smaller than electromagnetic waves. However, they are not still related ex explicitly to uh, magnetic structure of the material. But if you consider so-called dipole uh, exchange waves, when you consider already interaction between two uh, related uh, atoms with magnetic moments, so this, uh, they, they operating with exchange operation, with exchange interaction between them, and uh, the wave numbers can be 10 to the 5, this is wave number, 10 to the 5, 10 to the 6, therefore wavelength goes down to 1 micron or even less than 1 micron. And pure uh, exchange waves, they operating with these wave numbers, therefore this is submicron or even nanometer scale of wavelengths. And uh, different, uh, different materials. So the best way, as I, say, I said, is uh, the best material is yttrium iron garnet because losses are very small in this material. However, the, you also can use uh, permalloy materials, nickel iron uh, alloys, and uh, for some ways, for nanostructures, uh, losses for propagating spin waves are very small. And again, for nanometer scales, uh, permalloy materials are probably the best candidates for this, for this uh, application. However, in nowadays, yttrium iron gun films we also can produce in the scale of uh, nanometers. So there are methods for creation of uh, films with the thickness of about 1 to 10 nanometers, and therefore lateral sizes about this size. And losses still, again, very small. Therefore, you can, uh, you can use uh, these uh, spin waves for various, various applications. This, again, conception of propagation of these waves. And, uh, there are many methods for theoretical description of uh, propagation of spin waves in various uh, uh, sets of uh, various films, various sets of films or even networks, and experimental methods. From theoretical methods, this landau lipschitz equation, uh, multiple scattering uh, methods of calculation, uh, methods of uh, description with plane waves, um, final element methods, and uh, uh, there are many uh, methods for mod modeling of irregular structures. And exper experimental uh, methods include microwave spectroscopy, magneto-optical method, which can include time-resolved scanning care microscopy and brilliant light scattering uh, spectroscopy, which are very powerful method, including that this brilliant light scattering also can uh, use uh, so-called micro-optic uh, focusing. Therefore, you can go with uh, scanning, you will see some result of this, uh, scanning of uh, structures or surfaces of the structure with uh, um, diameter of the spot of less than one micron, so it's uh, over, uh, over the optical uh, limit of uh, possibility of this uh, description of these uh, materials. So 
Therefore, this brilliant light scattering uh, complex of uh, brilliant light scattering spectroscopy of magnetic materials included a Fabry Perot interferometer. They uh, then include some uh, uh, microwave system for uh, excitation of propagating spin waves and uh, using some com uh, quite complicated system of uh, uh, developing uh, of, of the signals. So what kind of uh, signal we can see? So we have some uh, electromagnetic wave which goes, is falling on the surface of magnetic material. You have scattering by propagating spin waves, and you have scattered photons. When you measure the, uh, when, when you measure the signal of uh, uh, reflected or scattered photons, you can see the uh, frequency and intensity of propagating spin waves, and you can scan over the uh, film surface. Therefore, you can build the structure of magnetic excitation in, this, uh, in these materials. Uh, so, Different kind of devices can be created based on magnonic, uh, uh, magnonic propagation of magnons. So magnetic film, and you can process with this magnetic film with various structures, periodic structures or two-dimensional structure, and we show that even three-dimensional structure, so you have input signal, you have output signal, and you have functional region. So what is input signal? You have, you have simply wire, in which you put the electromagnetic wave, so current, uh, this periodic current, and this periodic current having the electromagnetic field around this uh, uh, um, wire uh, excite uh, the uh, magnetic structure. And this excitation is excitation of magnetic moment, therefore spin wave can start to propagate. And its frequency depends on the excitation uh, frequency of uh, electromagnetic current, which is uh, per, uh, AC current, which is uh, in this input uh, microstrip transducer. Spin wave propagating goes down to the output microstrip, again excites uh, current, and uh, therefore by spectroscopy you can measure the propagating signal. Depending on the wavelengths, uh, the delay time of propagating signal compared to electromagnetic wave propagating on, the, uh, on this material, depending on the wavelengths, which is uh, not related to the electromagnetic wave, uh, the delay can be in one micro microseconds, nanoseconds, depending, uh, depending on the frequency. And microseconds is enough time to uh, process the uh, propagating wave. Therefore, you can operate with this propagating wave, and in the time of microseconds, or few microseconds, you can make different type of uh, devices, like uh, delay lines, phase circulators, frequency shifters, resonances, and so on. So this is typical, uh, typical view of the devices. For example, in this case, these are uh, uh, permalloy materials. However, it also can work on yttrium iron gunnet, like in this case shown. And based on this, you can make from each of the element of ferromagnetic field, you can make two-dimensional uh, two dimensional sets with lateral connections. So this one, two, three elements, which can be connected by microstrips or by uh, optical uh, fibers, for example. Therefore, you can make uh, magnonic uh, networks without any electrons if you use optical fibers, for example. Or you can make three-dimensional structures, and uh, there is uh, interlayer connection between layers, and this already goes in real three-dimensional uh, sets uh, or networks with horizontal and vertical uh, element uh, connections. You can make also irregular uh, or plane uh, structures, like in this case. You know that the spin waves which are propagated in uh, ferromagnetic materials, they are strongly, uh, because of dispersion of the wave, and uh, they are strongly depend on the uh, geometrical sizes and also on the magnetization of the material. And uh, depending on geometrical sizes and external magnetic field, there are different types of waves which can propagate in the material. For example, if you have uh, such uh, type of the film and magnetic field lies uh, perpendicular, say, to this uh, first part. This is excitation antenna. Uh, though in this case, in these parts of the film, 
excited so-called surface magnetostatic or surface spin waves. And their frequency is different from the frequency of the wave which propagates in this direction. Therefore, it is in principle impossible to excite in the same, with the same frequency inside waves uh, for particular external field in this part of the film or in this part of the film. However, due to uh, horizontal and uh, connection between different parts, it is possible also that wave can go through the one part and can go, it will be shown later, uh, it can be excited also in various waves. So this, uh, this is because of uh, already quantum mechanics. Because these spin waves, they, uh, their propagation based on density of states, not because of electromagnetic possibility. So if the electromagnetic wave will propagate in such waveguide, it will be totally reflected. As we know, uh, if we have angle with uh, 90 degree, right angle, therefore the wave will be totally reflected. However, due to uh, possibility that density of states permits to spins be excited in this part, in this part, and in this part, it is possible that spin waves, even with different frequencies, can excite wave uh, with various parts of the waveguides. So, for example, uh, this uh, brilliant light scattering experiments showing that really, if we excite wave in one, uh, this, this is typical uh, shape, as it was shown in previous case. So we excite wave in one direction, and it really can propagate in one uh, uh, part of the uh, structure, and it cannot propagate in other part of the structure. The red color shows that intensity is really big one. Or if you can, for example, you can make uh, in a cross section uh, element where you excite the wave, and wave will propagate in this direction, either in this direction, but will not propagate in uh, uh, in further direction. So propagating this one. So you can make, you see, uh, uh, connection make like uh, in, a, in a form of even right uh, degree. And uh, this, for example, uh, picture shows so-called discrete diffraction. When you have many waveguides, many waveguides, and by one uh, antenna you excite the wave, and it is really diffracted and can be, as in optics, uh, can, be, uh, can excite wave in different directions. So you can excite wave in one uh, topological uh, film, and due to interlayered uh, connection, it can be transformed to the other wave, as can be, shown, uh, as can be seen by brilliant light scattering, for example. So you excite wave in this waveguide, but then, due to connections, it can be also propagating in this waveguide. And uh, there are many, many positions like this uh, using um, propagation of wave. So these are elements of uh, topological magnetic networks. So they can be done in this uh, possible, uh, uh, for example, paths. And wave really, due to external magnetic field, direction of external wave well, can propagate or can be stopped totally in uh, various, part of the, uh, various parts of the waveguides. Three-dimensional structure, as I already said, it's possible to create three-dimensional structure, and uh, they really have the, for the shape of the film in three-dimensional. And considering that uh, the waveguide is uh, also restricted in that direction, in this wave, so we excite wave which goes in this direction, then goes down, again this direction, and so on. And then you can make nets of these uh, magnetic films, so in three-dimensional, and we can relate one film with topology in three-dimensional with another film, and so on. So these are experimental results showing that uh, this is really possible, and uh, some typical structure which we prepared uh, is these three-dimensional structures. Uh, Spintronics and uh, related to its magnonics, it's another part of the, uh, of the talk related that even in, in, in magnetic materials, which like uh, similar to uh, permalloy material, permalloy material because this is a nickel iron alloy, it is, uh, magnetic, uh, it is metallic material. And uh, in fact, when you excite spin waves in this material, they are related to free electrons. 
uh, compared to uh, yttrium iron donut, which is the electric material. And uh, here in this material, in these materials, you can uh, consider the effects of uh, for rela related to what was found uh, before uh, 40 years ago in semiconductors, like uh, this uh, mm, spin hole effects and so on. And in fact, uh, information based on uh, multi-layer structure uh, was uh, uh, discovered by uh, Fert and Grunberg in uh, uh, 1987, and they got a Nobel Prize for this in 2010. And based on their discovery, uh, all uh, magnetic memory devices now work on this so-called uh, giant uh, magneto-resistant effect. And this giant magneto-resistant effect related that you have two magnetic material, two thin films, uh, uh, which is uh, um, divided by some uh, non-magnetic material, like, for example, chromium. And if you put the current through this structure, depending on the magnetization of different magnetic materials, the uh, uh, resistivity of this uh, structure can be different. So if magnetic moments are uh, opposite to each other, then resistivity is high. Is, if they are in the same direction, that's resistivity in the small. And the difference in resistivity becomes very, very uh, strong. And this, uh, this is so-called giant magnetoresistant effect. And they found the structure, real structure, and due to this structure, uh, the all memory devices now built on this. Uh, and uh, this is... Uh, Again, spin hole effect, which I already discovered. In this uh, small, in this uh, very thin ferromagnetic films, uh, the um, few years ago they were discovered uh, very peculiar topological magnetic uh, structures. They depend on the uh, surface inosotropy of the film, and uh, they are now called skirmions because of the name Skirmi, which uh, discovered this, or uh, suggested uh, these uh, skirmions in atomic structures. However, they were, they were found, this topological effect, they were found in magnetic materials. And uh, they are simply the, mm, uh, uh, they are simply topological uh, small objects uh, belonging to the very, very thin surface of the magnetic materials. And uh, they can, uh, since they have magnetization is, uh, in, in one strong direction, so for example, the, the Skirmi effect in, uh, in one topological path have uh, the uh, magnetization up, all the material has the opposition down, then you can use this uh, Skirmion uh, elements as a, memory, uh, as a memory units, for example. And they have a very peculiar form, so because uh, they, they can be uh, managed uh, or their shape and magnetization can be managed by external magnetic field since uh, the thickness of the material is uh, very small and inosotropy takes place uh, and has influence, very, very strong influence there. Therefore, by very small magnetic fields, like only few Ersted, you can uh, manage uh, the uh, size of the skirmi uh, skirmions and their uh, movement in these magnetic materials. Uh, excitation of these skirmions they is very strong in antiferromagnetic materials. What is the difference between ferromagnetic materials and antiferromagnetic materials? Ferromagnetic material, if you put it into external magnetic field, then all magnetic moments they are directed along this magnetic field, and it has one uh, magnetic lattice, we would say. However, there are ma magnetic materials where you have two magnetic, two sub lattices. Very simple example, when you have two sub lattices and their direction of magnetization is opposite to each other, then the total magnetization can be uh, equal to zero. However, this material uh, is magnetic material, but total magnetization is different. More um, popular or more uh, uh, the material which you can find in, uh, in real life is an uh, antiferromagnet with a small ferromagnetic uh, uh, moment. Uh, in this case, uh, magnetic uh, um, moments of, opposi uh, of uh, opposite sublattices, they are not strictly uh, um, parallel to each other and they have some angle between them. Therefore, you, uh, this material have uh, some... Um, 
um, magnetic moment. However, it consisted of two, or in some cases, more uh, magnetic sublattices. And uh, the magnetization, the value of uh, magnetization depends on the exchange interaction between sublattices. And if you consider the energy of this exchange, exchange interaction and divide it by a uh, Planck constant, you will get uh, immediately the frequency of uh, uh, which is related to this excitation in terahertz scale, uh, scale of the frequencies. If we can, if you, uh, if we can uh, possibility to uh, manage uh, this uh, exchange interaction somehow by, say, uh, um, parameters of the shape of the magnetic field. Therefore, we can excite or uh, receive uh, electromagnetic waves in uh, uh, frequency range of terahertz. How, for example, it can, be, it, it can work? So, I, I will show simply So one of the possibility is to use uh, antiferromagnetic material and uh, normal uh, normal magnet or heavy magnet uh, heavy metal, uh, which can be palladium, for example, or um, some other materials. And uh, this material has a very strong spin-orbit interaction. If we put electromagnetic field inside uh, this uh, material, uh, for example. Uh, femtosecond uh, uh, optical pulses, then due to strong uh, scattering, uh, it will excite, uh, uh, it will excite uh, spin currents of electrons, and these spin currents going to the antiferromagnetic material can change the value of magnetization. And uh, uh, this can uh, produce the uh, since uh, the change of, um, uh, change of uh, magnetization in antiferromagnetic material lies in the uh, frequency range of terahertz, then you can excite terahertz waves from this, uh, from this antiferromagnetic material. So uh, this, for example, the case when you have two magnetization and small magnetic moment, uh, uh, and uh, you excite electric current in platinum in this case, and this electric current going, uh, this permanent current going uh, uh, and scattered by the surfaces of uh, antiferromagnetic and normal materials uh, scatterers uh, produces spin current which goes perpendicular to the surface of antiferromagnetic materials. Spin currents is a, a current of magnetic moment uh, induce the interaction between two sublattices and this interaction between two sublattices produces by inverse whole effect again spin current in platinum material and this uh, spin current is already in the frequency range of uh, terahertz. terahertz. Uh, so this is uh, so-called uh, spin transfer oscillator uh, and uh, frequency uh, in this case it was about uh, two gigahertz, uh, two terahertz, however it can work also with uh, more terahertz. Uh, so this uh, direction calls terahertz spintronics and uh, spin photonics because some waves uh, sometimes, as I said, it can use uh, femtosecond uh, optical pulses to produce uh, um, terahertz pulses in antiferromagnetic materials. Uh, also, um, uh, magnonics and traditional electronics can be uh, connected if we use, usually, typically, for yttrium iron gannet, which is the best material, as I said, uh, for uh, magnonic uh, in investigations and uh, devices, uh, it uses substrate of gadolinium gallium garnet. This is non-magnetic material, and uh, sublattices uh, of uh, gadolinium gallium garnet and yttrium iron gannet are almost the same. Therefore, they don't produce, when the film is growing, they don't produce uh, inosotropy. In but gadolinium gallium garnet uh, does not relate to uh, typical microelectronic uh, materials. And typical material is arsen gallium arsenide or uh, silicon. Therefore, we started to produce uh, yttrium iron garnet film on the basis of uh, substrates with gallium arsenide. This is one of the typical examples how we produced this film. And by the optical light, we can excite also the, uh, which change the density states and, um, of electrons in gallium arsenide. And uh, 
this uh, change of the density stays, they pro it produces the current, and this current changes the uh, surface uh, inosotropy. And in this way, we can manage the propagation of the spin waves in magnetic materials due to density of the states of electrons in uh, electronic materials. And in this way, it is possible to uh, connect traditional electronics based on gallium arsenide or uh, uh, um, silicon with the magnetic devices. And also magnetoelectric memory can be built on this, uh, even the, uh, this, the same materials. We can also, the, the magnetic materials in anti-ferromagnetic case or ferromagnetic case, without magnetic fields is divided into so-called domains. And uh, these domains, uh, the size of the domains depending on the uh, thickness of the film can be very small. So the uh, domain wall between two domains having different direction can be of the size of a few nanometers. And this domain wall can be managed by external, for example, uh, magnetic field or light, for example, because it has also magnetic uh, uh, component. So therefore, we can uh, produce that uh, film, uh, that uh, field can be uh, moved by simple, single uh, domain wall. And single domain wall, as I said, can, has, uh, can have dimensions of about few nanometers. And this few, nan few nanometers pro produces already waveguide for the waves for quite a long length. So the uh, width of about, can be of about few, here is about less than one micron, but it can be of tens of nanometers, but the length in this direction can be a few microns. Therefore, it's a very, very long, uh, say, um, waveguide with a very uh, narrow width. And this the, the domain walls, as I said, can be uh, governed or can be guided by, uh, excuse me, by light, for example, as, it, as it's shown in this picture. So we can change the shape and the width of the uh, domain walls with, with the light. So the last part of the talk will be related to the, uh, to the science which is called nowadays strain tronics. Strain tronics combines uh, possibility to uh, govern the magnetic materials by electric current, in, uh, <coughs> even in uh, dielectric materials. Uh, due to uh, introduction of uh, ferroelectrics, and uh, ferroelectrics can be, uh, piezoelectric materials can be governed by electric field. So the, we change the strain, strain change the magnetic properties of attached, for example, ferromagnetic film, and therefore properties of propagating spin wave can be governed by electric field without, uh, even this material is uh, dielect pure dielectric materials. So for example, this is a structure which can be used uh, like yttrium argon is magnetic material, PZT is a, a ferroelectric material, and chromium is for excitation of current. This current changes the properties of uh, ferroelectric material, and it in turn changes the properties of yttrium iron garnet and properties of propagating spin waves. Therefore, we can govern the propagation of magnetic field without any external field, for example, pure spin current in, uh, in material which is related or connected with yttrium or with magnetic materials. So this experimental mm, details. So we can connect, for example, different types of magnetic materials with uh, one film and uh, change the propagation from one uh, film to another film by also lateral connections. So probably I'll come to the end. This is another story is that uh, nowadays, I will not uh, speak more about this, but uh, nowadays on the elements of magnonics and spintronics, it is possible to uh, make uh, so-called neuromorphic uh, systems for neuromorphic calculations. This is another very interesting story, but uh, we are just in the beginning of this, uh, of this investigation. And in some way, what uh, in my talk I wanted to show that uh, real uh, nowadays existing microelectronics can be replaced, in fact, by new uh, science, 
which related to magnetic materials and which uses carriers of information uh, in dielectric materials which are not uh, electrons and they are magnons and uh, the uh, shape, size, dispersion of these magnons can be varied magnetic field but also can be varied by the shape of the film itself without a magnetic external magnetic field as it is in case of antiferromagnetic materials. Excitation of them can be from the megahertz up to terahertz range and this makes them very promising materials for future microelectronics, <coughs> nanoelectronic devices and they also can be related to plasmonic devices as it was shown before in previous case. And uh, therefore, these materials uh, and this um, part of the science become very, very popular for next application. Thank you very much for it. Thank you very much for a superb presentation. Please, questions. No, everything is clear. Жень без димбеков. Есть вопросы? Все понятно? Ничего не понятно. Все, еще раз тогда поблагодарим. А, вот, Сергей Викторович, пожалуйста. Не работает. Я так скажу. Все, включили. Включили. Скажите, пожалуйста, насколько устойчивы вот эти, устойчивы вот эти приборы и устройства к внешним воздействиям, которым, в общем, подвергнуты все другие? Concerning, uh, concerning stability of these uh, possible devices uh, with external uh, some uh, forces or radiation, for example. Uh, well, uh, if we consider pure ferromagnetic materials, pure ferromagnetic, not anti-ferromagnetic materials, uh, of course, uh, magnetization strongly depends on the temperature. And uh, in the range of the temperature up to, uh, say, uh, 60 to 80, all of them working in the uh, room temperature. So th they're working in room temperature. For many cases, you don't need low temperature. So th you don't need uh, helium or uh, net uh, liquid nitrogen temperatures. However, uh, if you change the temperature up more than 100 uh, centigrade, 100 degree of centigrade, magnetization become very small, become lowest. And this, of course, changes the uh, propagation wavelengths frequencies and wavelengths of uh, propagating skin waves. But in the range from uh, um, zero, say, uh, centigrade up to 70 to 80, nothing happens. Uh, Antiferromagnetic uh, materials, because magnetization almost zero there, uh, absolutely uh, not related to the big change of the temperature. So temperature should be low than nail temperature when you change the antiferromagnetic order. And for many materials, like hematite, this nail temperature is about a few hundred degrees of centigrade. Therefore, in this case, they are very stable to the change of the temperature. They are radiationally very stable. This is uh, much better than semiconductor material, and that's all. That's all. Because uh, th there are no carriers of the uh, electrons there at all. No, they are not used as a carriers of information. So in this case, in some application, they are much more uh, applicable than uh, semiconductor materials. Спасибо. Пожалуйста, еще вопрос. Тогда у меня вопрос. Сергей Павлович, скажи, пожалуйста, насколько нужно изменить э, базу электроники, чтобы использовать э, магнонику, за исключением, наверное, в дисках? То есть, э, ведь уже вложены гигантские деньги, чтобы использовать... Вот, можно ли плавно как-то добавлять что-то или нужно все-таки революцию делать? Нет, революцию не надо делать. Sorry, this is in Russian. Значит, революцию не надо никакое делать, значит, потому что, первое, вот я говорю, что сейчас уже научились и пришли к этому, что можно, так сказать, поскольку, так сказать, не нужны большие размеры в настоящее время, то можно, значит, подложки делать полупроводниковыми. Первое, так сказать. Поэтому, так сказать, пожалуйста, вот накладывайте туда полупроводниковые подложки и все. Значит, и делайте вот эти антиферромагнитные, то же самое, ферромагнитные, либо антиферромагнитные. Ферромагнетизм требует магнитного, магнитного поля. И это, конечно, вот не будет применяться в широком 
значит, диапазон. Но если антиферромагнетики, которые вот сейчас научились делать, а буквально их научились это в последние два года, значит, научились уже делать, так сказать, вот в таком более или менее полупромышленном масштабе, вот они могут, так сказать, ну не заменить, конечно, так сказать, но, по крайней мере, во многих случаях они могут, так сказать, комплементарно, так сказать, участвовать вот с, с обычной микроэлектроникой. Она замены никогда не будет. И это очевидно, так сказать, и никто на это не пойдет, безусловно, так сказать. Но во многих вот применениях она, так сказать, может вполне, так сказать, нормально работать. И это вообще принято, вообще принято. Спасибо. Еще вопросы есть? Нет, тогда еще раз поблагодарю. Спасибо.